one of the major difficulties we find in practice is the exact interpretation of the patient's language and conversion of the same into rubrics. Many times patients speak in Hindi or Marathi. So it becomes difficult to select the exact rubric. Well, you know, Hindi or Marathi is fine, but you have to understand that almost 90% of the world don't speak in English, yes? So in Europe, you have at least 10-15 languages. In Africa, another 10-15, China, Russia. So if it homeopathy was limited to English, I think it should be dead by now. Isn't it so? And the worst part is that it is dying in English speaking countries more. <laughs> I mean, its thing is going down more in. Of course, it will go up. I know it's, it's a great system. But I found that when I travel in different East European countries, in Japan, can you imagine? Now, what we need to do is that we need to ask. You don't have to depend on one word. Huh? Suppose the patient in Marathi says, Mala kaltar vatte. What is kaltar? I also don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. But I pretend I know. Haan, kaltar, haan, kaltar. Kaltar ka hai se, kasa se. Kaltar baddal sanga. So he says, tell me about that, what you do word you don't know then multiple descriptions of that so it's much better if they speak in another language because in english if they say i get burning we assume it is burning right we can be terribly wrong <laughs> it may be tingling numbness it may be heat it may be whatever so english is very dangerous because it's available especially in so you can use language as an advantage, a foreign language as an advantage. Because you've got to ask, describe that culture, describe that thing. And when the person describes it in multiple words, in multiple expressions, you will be able to find the equivalent of that in, in English. This applies especially to sensations. You see, modalities, you know, when it is more, when it is less, it's not difficult to translate, isn't it? It's more in heat, cold, sitting, standing. I don't think this is difficult. The difficulty comes when the patient expresses sensations, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. And there I tell you, ask them for the description. And the multiple, that's why in sensation method, you don't rely on one word. You rely on a group of words. So they will start mentioning the entire constellation of expressions that describe that experience. And there you will be able to find it. And uh, roughly 50% of my patients are Marathi, Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, and every language speaking. And I have patients from every part of the world you know, Russian, <laughs> East European, Japanese, every kind you can imagine. And I have no problem at all because simply I ask, describe it, tell more about it, use more words, more expressions. How does it feel? What's the image of it? And they tell very nicely. Many times I work through translators also. Now, I can't rely on the translator. Because the translator may not use the exact expression of the patient. He may translate also. So again, I ask, the tra ask them to describe more words. So I'm sure more and more and until I get that entire constellation of characters that describe a particular group or a family, I don't stop. Then not only we have a group of sensations, but a group of active reaction, passive reaction and compensation. So anacardium is anacardiaceae is stuck, tight, stiff, caught. You can use any words and must move. Opposite cannot move. Compensation doesn't matter whether I move or not. So this is the story. By looking at the entire spectrum, uh, chances of mistakes are very minimal.
Shama, come tell them a little bit about your experience. Shama <coughs> practices not only here, but she had a practice in a totally Marathi area in uh, Ahmednagar, right? Na? Uh, so, what's your experience with like local language speaking people? How difficult or easy it is? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? Mike, don't. Yeah. So when I used to attend your seminar, sir, before I joined, that uh. time I used to feel yeah, it's impossible to practice sensation with Marathi speaking people, local language. Okay. But then uh, after I actually started doing it for your cases, because there was no way. If you have to take a case for sir, you have to <laughs> try to at least understand the sensation of the patient if it is there. Mm. Otherwise, what can happen? So uh, actually what I saw, I used to be very curious to see how sir is going to take this case tomorrow because and that too Marathi speaking and I have seen him do a much better job than me though I speak Marathi very well. I think he has that advantage of uh, pretending to not know or maybe he really doesn't know but <laughs> <laughs> pretending to not know and look stupid, very important. <laughs> yeah. You have to look so stupid that the patient should Describe in maximum detail because otherwise you are not going to understand. Uh. So tell more. Give an example. Um, yesterday's example comes to me. Okay, what is it? But it was about peripheral vision. Ah, no problem. Yeah. Um, yesterday we had a patient to whom I had a suggestion of macab, and uh, sir wanted to at the end just confirm whatever was in his mind. So he asked, "How are you with decision making?" So patient said, um, he didn't want to, actually he didn't know how to ask that in Marathi. So he asked me to do it for him. But I couldn't get the right word for decision in Marathi. Nirnay. I couldn't really come up with that. So it came to him and he asked, Nirnay ghaila kase ahad? So the patient was very quick, like I'm very quick at deciding. There's no problem with it. And uh, so actually I feel you speak better Marathi oh, okay. than I do. But anyway, huh, yeah. shall we will go forward. Yeah, so uh, one thing, sir. Ah. Yeah. So actually, it's much more easier if we really don't know the language. Uh, uh, I had seen one case of Dr. Borkar. Ah. It was in Goanies. And oh. the patient mm. had um, a sensation like kit kitta. Nobody understood. Kit kitta. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he asked her to describe that in such details. Mm -hmm. And from there, she gave the entire sensation of hammer milady. Oh, okay. How? He went on probing now, pretending mm. that he doesn't know. Right. He, because he's a Goanese, he knows. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, that's actually an advantage is what I would feel. Very good. The main idea in life, you know, is to convert all problems into opportunities. If you know how to do that, that's the secret of success. Right? Oh, last question, huh? Okay. We get multiple autoimmune disorders in one patient itself, like patient has psoriasis, vitiligo, hypothyroid. So, in such cases, which is the best approach to be followed? Symptom stroke system with potency selection. So, when you have autoimmune disorder, it's all a part of one problem. Autoimmune means immune system is fighting with the body itself. So, there is a problem at that fundamental level. Immune system is very closely linked to the mind. Psycho, neuro, endocrine and immune system. So, you can see already here, you have hypothyroid Im autoimmune problems. Here we have to take the approach, two approaches are there. One is the characteristics, are there characteristics at a local level? For example, if there is psoriasis, is there a location? Is there a specific time or weather modality? Is there a specific exciting factor that brought about the psoriasis? You have to examine this first 
many times you will not find the characteristics locally in autoimmune disorders. In vitiligo, you will not get sensation, you will not get specific location or modality. So, quickly you have to pass over to the exciting factor. What happened, like I told you with the case of Drosera, he was cheated. Then what was the effect or the individual reaction? He could not concentrate. So, quickly you have to move to the exciting factor. If you do not get it there, quickly move to the dream. So, you have to move the levels from local to emotional to delusional. And if you get a dream, like we got in this case of Drosera, that one snake was eating the other snake, then at that point, when you come to the exact image or illusion, then ask for the experience or sensation. The sensation was trapped, stuck, tight, cannot breathe, want to get out. Then, when you treat at that level, I assure you that your local problems, hypothyroid, your psoriasis, vitiligo, they have the best chances of healing because you are treating the very source of the autoimmunity which is at the much deeper level of mind, of perception and sensation. So, keep your focus on that. I quickly, there is also a question, can we do cases quickly? Yes. How can you do cases quickly? By identifying the level at which the characteristics will be found. In a vitiligo case, it is not going to be found at level 2, local symptoms. It may be found in level 3, but most probably in level 4, because autoimmunity, mind, nerves, endocrine, immune system is found in level 4. So, quickly I ask, is there local modality? No. Is there emotion? No. Is there a dream? Is there an exciting factor? Is there a situation that triggered it? Stay with it. Go deep into it, characteristics will be revealed. So, in Gurukul day, I do cases in 10 minutes. And unfortunately, the success rate is much higher than when I do for 2 hours. I am just joking. <laughs> Laugh sometimes. No? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so, it is possible to be able to incise, to go deep quickly if you know where you are going. So, that is the answer to that question. Hmm? So, we have our time.